Hi, this is Dr. Ahmed. In this video, we will talk about the nose. Now, the term nose actually includes two main parts, which are external nose and internal nose or the nasal cavity. Now, the external nose is that part of the nose that we see when we look at the face of somebody. Now, the external nose can be described as having an osteocartilaginous framework. This means that the uh, external nose is composed of bones and cartilages. Osseous means bones and cartilag cartilaginous means cartilages. Okay. Now, bones that help in the formation of the external nose are located superiorly and cartilages that help in the formation of the external nose are located inferiorly. Now, bones are the two nasal bones. This part of the maxilla which extends superiorly to meet the frontal bone. So it's called the frontal process of the maxilla on each side, of course. And sometimes an inferior part of the frontal bone helps in the formation of the bony part of the external nose. Now, the inferior part of the external nose is formed by cartilages. These cartilages include the septal cartilage, which is located exactly in the midline of the external nose. On each side of the septal cartilage are these two large cartilages located on each side of the septal cartilage called the lateral nasal cartilages. Now, this part of the external nose is actually called the ala. So, uh, any cartilage that helps in the formation of ala is referred to as the alar cartilage. So, we have these small cartilages, which are called the lesser alar cartilages. And if we have a lesser, we obviously have a greater, which is this cartilage. This cartilage is called the greater alar cartilage okay sometimes we may have a small cartilage located between the lateral nasal cartilages and the greater alar cartilage which is called the accessory alar cartilage okay now on the ala we have some tissue or uh, uh, fatty tissue this is referred to as the alar fibro fatty uh, tissue okay this concludes the first part of the nose which is called the external nose now if we go internally we will uh, uh, look at the second part of the nose, which is called the nasal cavity. Now, the nasal cavity is that hidden part of the nose. It's located inside the skull. Now, if we look at the nasal cavity from an anterior view, first of all, we can uh, conclude that the nasal cavity is divided into two separate cavities by this wall. This wall that divides the nasal cavity into two separate cavities is called the nasal septum. Now, each one of the cavities of the nasal cavity or each half of the nasal cavity have a roof, a medial wall, a lateral wall, and a floor. We will talk about each one separately. We will start by the roof of the nasal cavity. Now, the roof of the nasal cavity can be described as having an anterior part, a middle part, and a posterior part. Now, the anterior part of the roof of the nasal cavity is composed by the inside of the nasal bones and the frontal bones. The middle part of the roof of the nasal cavity is composed by this part of the ethmoid bone, which is called the uh, horizontal plate of ethmoid bone, or the second name, the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Now, it's called the cribriform because it contains uh, um, uh, many foramina. These foramina allow the rootlets of the olfactory nerve to extend superiorly reaching the olfactory bulb. I've discussed, discussed the olfactory nerve in some details in another video. This video, you can find the link in the description below, or I will link it uh, uh, above as a suggestion, okay? Now, the posterior part of the roof of the nasal cavity is formed by the downward sloping of the sphenoid bone. This yellow colored bone is actually the sphenoid bone, okay? So the roof of each uh, half of the nasal cavity is formed of three parts. Anteriorly, it's formed by the nasal bones and the frontal bones. In the middle, it's formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone or horizontal plate of the ethmoid bone. And posteriorly, it's formed by the downward sloping of the sphenoid bone. Now, if we look at the floor of, the, uh, of each half of the nasal cavity, the floor is actually made by the heart palate. Now, the heart palate is composed of two main parts. Anteriorly, the heart palate is formed by a part of the maxilla, which is called the palatine process of the maxilla. And posteriorly, the heart palate is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. So, horizontal plate of the palatine bone, 
palatine process of the maxilla. These two parts help in the formation of the heart palate. Also, the heart palate forms the roof of the oral cavity, and this will be discussed in another video. Now, if we look at the medial wall of each half of the nasal cavity, this wall is actually formed by the nasal septum. Now, if we look at the nasal septum, we can conclude that it's composed of three parts. The most anterior part of the nasal septum is formed by an inward extension of the septal cartilage, which we can see from the outside. So this septal cartilage, located in the midline, extends internally into the nasal cavity to form the anterior part of the nasal septum. If we go posterior superiorly, we will find a, we will find a downward extension of the ethmoid bone. This downward extension is called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone because it runs perpendicularly. Okay. Now, if we look posterior inferiorly, we will find a separate small bone called the vomer bone. So the nasal septum is composed of three main parts. Anteriorly, it's formed by the septal cartilage. Posterior superiorly, it's formed by a part of the ethmoid bone called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And posterior inferiorly, it's formed by a small separate bone called the vomer bone. Now, what we have left is the lateral wall of each half of the nasal cavity. Now, if we look at the lateral wall, we can see that the lateral wall is formed by three shelf-like processes. These one, two, and three. These processes extend into the nasal cavity like shelves. This is one, two, and three. Each one of these shelves is referred to as concha. So we have three concha, a superior concha, a middle concha, and an inferior concha. Now, below each one of these concae, which is the plural of concha, we have a meatus. So below the superior concha is the superior meatus. Below the middle concha is the middle meatus. And below the inferior concha is the inferior meatus. Now, uh, these meatuses have some ducts open in them and have some paranasal sinuses open in them. I will discuss in details the paranasal sinuses in a separate video. But for example, this angle which is found between the horizontal plate of ethmoid bone and the downward sloping of the sphenoid bone, this angle is referred to as the sphenoethmoidal recess because it's between the sphenoid and the ethmoid bones. Okay? In this sphenoethmoidal recess opens the sphenoid sinus, which is this cavity here in the body of the sphenoid bone. Okay? Also, we have another duct that transmits tears from the eyes into the nasal cavity. This duct is called the nasolacrimal duct because it goes into the nasal cavity and it transmits tears, which is referred to as lacrimal always. Okay. Now, this nasolacrimal duct opens exactly below the inferior concha into the inferior meatus. Last of all, uh, the nasal cavity is actually located anterior to the superior part of the pharynx, which is referred to as the nasopharynx. Okay. Now, separating the nasal cavity from the nasopharynx is an imaginary wall or plane called the quana. Notice the name. Quana is different from conca. Conca are, are the shelf-like processes that extend from the lateral uh, walls of each half of the nasal cavity. But quana is actually an imaginary plane that separates the nasopharynx from the nasal cavity. If you like this video and find it helpful, please refer it to your colleagues. Thank you so much.